Hey guys, and welcome back to Fortune Theory. So, here we are again. I'm Oliver, and this is Patrick. We're back. Another week. <laughs> another week, so, another fucking... Whatever this is. Just, yeah. you're red rooming right now. And... Yeah, I don't, I don't know what. I, I'm just trying different lighting styles because I, I wasn't satisfied with my light on earlier. It just looked really ugly. It's so more thought, cinematically pleasing I'm than trying to do this for now. Yeah. Um, I've just got my phone light over in the background <laughs> just like to amplify my face. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, so for this episode, we we have mentioned this a few times in some of our previous episodes, but we just want to talk a bit about like how COVID's affected the industry. Now, I know some people probably like scrolling their eyes because they're like, you know, I don't want to fucking hear this. But mm. we just thought we'd given our opinions on like what the industry could have done instead of what they have done and what they are doing and what where it's working, where it's not working. And yeah, we'll, other than Pretty like much. Yeah. doing the brief like guidelines, let's get into it, I suppose. Mm. Well, <laughs> so. obviously the most significant thing and this, we, I will be explaining, uh, I will be revealing the Oscar wins. Uh, the Academy, 93rd Academy Awards, uh, it was the 93rd Academy Awards, was Sunday night, just gone, like, in uh, end of last week. Um, so I'll be going through there with the Oscar wins. I've only watched two of them. I don't think Ollie's watched any. <laughs> I, no, I, I haven't, actually. I, I actually forgot completely about that. I like, literally, I, I, I was I like, oh, that. wait, it's the Oscars. Shit. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> That has obviously had a massive change because I do want to talk a little bit in a bit about how like the fact that the Oscars literally in the last like year between like a year ago and two years ago. And obviously this is like Steven Spielberg had a massive issue with this as well is like having the criteria for the Academy Awards like to be nominated was you had to be uh, it had to have a theatrical release. It couldn't be streaming services, whereas this year it's basically a complete turn, whereas this year is now like I think. A couple of films were luckily at like Tenet and a couple of other films were able to have some theatrical releases, but most of them were just Netflix and Prime. And well, there was premieres. That's what we can also talk about as well is the fact that there's been a lot of streaming premieres. Like you've had Amazon Prime have done like you can they've premiered a film. I think it was uh, oh, what's it called? I, I, I need to look it up. Um, it's, it's is it literally called The Invisible Man? It's, but it's about that, like the husband that's invisible or some shit, the murderer. Um, and like that was premiered on Prime, I think, for the weekend. So there's been things like that happening. But yeah, it's been a massive change. Like, I literally just came out of watching uh, Wonder Woman 1984, I think it is, the name of the sequel. Mm. And like, obviously you can tell that a lot of these films, those films like definitely aren't made for just... I don't know about that one specifically, but like, because I'm not a big DC fan, but like, I don't, most films you wouldn't have thought would be made to literally go direct to DVD. No. I don't think that came out in cinema, did it? Um, it was meant to, but I don't know. If it, I, did it? It, it was a transition know? point because it's been odd because obviously we have, we've got the perspective of the UK, but I know worldwide that there has still been some theatrical releases. I know, like in in the states, I'm pretty sure some. Don't quote me on this, but some places in the states have still had theatrical releases since like COVID began. I know they've had like semi lockdowns, but I am mean, really I only know so like complete definitively what's happened in the UK, obviously. But um, yeah, we had I know like places like India and like Asia and all those other countries, all those other places have had theatrical releases. But I mean, just UK specifically, it's not really been. We've not had any theatrical releases at all since what 20 like beginning of 2020 early 20 like late 2019 other than literally so i remember tenet. we went to go because me and you went to go see um 1917 because hmm. that came out in early january obviously before they announced the lockdown here in the uk yeah, yeah. Um, we saw that at, um was it bournemouth mm -hmm. bournemouth yeah. odeon yeah, yeah. super screen yeah <laughs> you series? made a ca you made a cameo in that because uh patrick got an extra part in that we were <laughs> so lucky enough to cameo. find it yeah that was that was yeah. a fun you'll experience have to, you'll have to add that scene so people know it's and <laughs> there we go yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> cut <laughs> but um oh. we wait that was literally one of the last films i mean the last film i've seen in cinema was tenet because literally, you know, you know what Christopher Nolan's like. He's like if he what, he refuses to be a streaming service guy, and and unless he absolutely has to, and he almost had to to the point where 
it came out in between the first it came out in september i think it was so it literally came out between the because our first lockdown was like march april time and then we ended it in sort of july so just before the november lockdown it was like two months before the november lockdown i think because we had that period we, we so we've just come out of our third lockdown, aren't we? We're in the UK. We're like just leaving. Well, we're we're slowly transitioning out of it now. Like yeah. we're in phases at the moment. So like they're prioritizing. Um, they're going into their um the forties range now for people who can have the well, jab. And they're and dealing. Yeah, they're yeah. dealing with Bojo's dealing with all of his blue passports <laughs> and you yeah, know, all, all that stuff. sort of malarkey rapscallion shit <laughs> and. <laughs> i'd say the word somewhere um but we've yeah so we're we're in like the middle of everything at the moment because we Just officially out came of out of a it was weird because i was this last lock last third lockdown i'll say um hopefully last i think everyone wishes the first one was the last but here we are the third one is the um it end of the trilogy end of the, for God's sake, the unfortunate trilogy is the we yeah when did we come out we came out like eight beginning of i've already forgotten the dates but but it was there was a point where the rule that you could meet up with two people outdoors and then you could rule of six uh with anyone if there's if rule of six hasn't happened in other countries it just means six people maximum socializing um which is pretty obvious but um just in case it didn't mean make sense we have that and then now we are basically about two and a half three weeks away from 17th of May because the weird thing is like the first I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm doing fucking government shit now like this is the first rule this is the second rule this is the third rule but we've had stages each Bacon time we've tried to come out of the <laughs> that was a good one <laughs> fucking Matt Lucas <laughs> but no we had we had stages of coming out of the lockdowns I'm only gonna I'm, not, I'm only I'm only explaining this briefly for people who don't live in the UK we've had stages of coming out of each lockdown and this has been the most uh staged one i guess has been each one has had sort of like right this day is sort of the end and then this day is like officially the end of a lockdown whereas this third and hopefully final lockdown has been like right the first day you can meet up with one other person and a month later maybe you can meet up with up to six people outdoors and then it's now we are at the point where non-essential retail opened again like what was it two and a half weeks ago ish two weeks ago and then hopefully, like I said, about three and a half weeks time, well, about three weeks from two and a half, three weeks, 17th of May is the day we can hopefully all meet up indoors up to six people, I think, socially anyway. Business is obviously yeah, like... Yeah, something like that. But the, how that has affected, obviously, like theatrical releases is the fact that, well, we haven't had any <laughs> since, <laughs> since literally, yeah, Tenet was the last film to come out in the UK. I might be wrong, but that's the last film I saw, and I don't remember there being any more. Well, cinemas have just been shut down because they've they've not opened. Because even when there hasn't been lockdowns, we've not had essential retail properly open. It's only been a, it's only been essential supermarkets and stores. So. Well, didn't they didn't they open the cinemas briefly in like um, August time? We well, yeah, literally July, around August the time, time. and they had this system where you could go in, but you. They only filled up like half their like. That's literally know, what, what it was what like for a um, seating arrangement stadium. It's literally what it was, it was like. For like me. Yeah, I went. It was like one person every other seat. Oh no, that's it. Yeah, I've seen Tenet and it because the thing is, I remember this actually. I, I'm, I'm not going to ramble too much about Tenet, but around just before it came out, they were doing a. Uh, I think it was the 10 year anniversary of Inception, and I went to see that like two weeks before Tenet came out, and that was literally the start of like the point where some cinema, most cinemas had we're kind of reopening again after the first lockdown it's been like a couple of months since the first lockdown i think and they're like okay spaced seating you can't see you have to be at, they're doing the two meter rule but just for seating arrangements basically so it was like every other seat could be used and you had to like book in groups or whatever i don't even that's the thing some places that you have you can't you're just like freely choosing seats became like you had to book but i mean most cinemas are like that anyway most cinemas you have to book uh, which seats you go to but since then since like september time it's basically been all online i mean it was anyway that was like the best time for uh like netflix and prime and then of course when did disney plus like 
Disney Plus properly came into its element last year, didn't I it? I was debating when that started up. I think that was like, well, that was announced all the way back in like 20... Well, they talked um, about it in 2017, and then it was like 18, 19, they were like preparing it and everyone knew it was happening. Oh, and 20... then for me, it wasn't until uh... like early 20, where it actually like finally, it was like March, I think it was March, April 2020, it finally came it, to us. Because yeah. I think the Americans had it first. They had it in November 12th, and then... Of course they did. <laughs> yeah, because I remember, because I had a mate <laughs> who was doing theatre with me, and he said that... March 24th for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because because of his re, um, relation uh, his American relations, he was able to get hold of um, the Disney Plus like subscription and whatever, and he was mm. able to watch like some of the American exclusive shows on there because he had an account with his cousin or whatever who lived over there. Mm. And I thought like you know that's amazing. Like, I wish I had like you know American <laughs> connectors because uh, that the other means other I get to see some stuff <laughs> earlier. Because all the Mandalorian stuff was coming out earlier. We had like you know beyond spoilers we it comes mm. out and then we can like you know everyone knows now so who gives a shit about watching it right but you know i still i'm i haven't really watched it yet myself but i will watch I it at to some get point around. i've only I've episode one mandalorian and i just stopped for some reason so i need to catch up with everything disney plus but literally that blew up last year it, well obviously all of streaming has blew up has blown up I, I saw like some conspiracy theories being like Disney was behind the coronavirus so they could get people indoors yeah. to watch their show. To watch they, shows. They are the reason behind streaming. COVID so that everyone just starts getting yeah. online. I mean, I wonder how, I want to look up actually like Netflix uh, new account stats since COVID. I wonder if there's like good stats. Like, well, not good stats, but you know, the, I imagine that, wait, Netflix gets 16 uh million new sign ups thanks to lockdown. That and that could be just Well that was almost that was over a year ago. Yeah, this is literally over a year ago. BBC Tw- Yeah, streaming services I mean, have become they just like blew in up. the in that short space of time have become so much bigger than uh, as big as they were already conceived. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's now beyond what was considered really big, if that makes sense. Well, the thing <laughs> like, is, yeah, in terms, in terms of, of like them. entertainment, like motion picture entertainment, before COVID, it was obviously just let's watch Netflix, let's watch something on Prime, let's, uh, or there's a new film coming out, or there's an, uh, and let, okay, that's going to be out in the cinemas soon in the next few months or six months as a trailer on YouTube or whatever. And then as soon as there was a, there was a reason for cinemas to be shut because COVID. It was literally just wipe out everything to do with theatrical release and then just streaming. It just it was amazing how much you took for granted, really, in terms of just like being able to just go to the cinema and things. Well, I mean, that's like the drive in cinemas became a big thing. I got so many ads. I mean, I was looking up them, looking them up as well, but <laughs> there were so many drive in. There's like two or three drive in cinemas within like a couple of hours of us, I think. And like <laughs> I heard they were gonna like make that a proper thing again because of because of COVID obviously and they had to shut the actual cinemas. Yeah. Like they were gonna make that a thing. To be honest, I don't know why that isn't really a full on thing. I know it's a thing in some places. And yeah. You know, some people do it, but well, it has been know, a great the... reason for those businesses. Yeah. It's just mainly been like people that own like airfields and people that own farmland have just been like, okay, let's set up a hundred foot screen. Allow people to park there, charge them fifteen quid, get a massive projector, <laughs> put films on. Because there's one, uh, well, it doesn't disclose how far away we are or where we live, but there's one in there's one near Bournemouth, like fifteen minutes from Bournemouth, on the outskirts of Bournemouth, I think, and that's like fairly cheap. And it's just like they blew up. Like there's, I mean, they've always been that sort of scarcity, like sort of rare thing that you do. But like, they they just came back. <laughs> you're you're back now. <laughs> I had to yeah. talk for. I, I went mind blown for a minute as soon as I saw your thing get black. <laughs> you got it. Lucky I was talking then. Uh, but... <laughs> yeah, that's why I was keeping quiet. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. But we'll cut that part. Anyway. It's fine. That was good. But no, yeah, like the, it gave me a reason to want to actually go to a drive-in. I was almost going to go to one, but I I've never got around to it. And but but by now at this point. I, well, I might go to one, but that's that was a good reason to actually bring back some of the old classics because I remember, um, was it uh, Lost Boys, or am I completely what? 
Ah, uh, is it Lost Boys? Uh, that's a show, isn't it? There's a The Lost Boys. That's it. Yeah, Lost Boys, Back to the Future, Greece. They were all like they weren't actually showing any new films at drive-ins because they're all like privately owned land and just people with some DVDs that they can project. But I do think like that's they should have really like you know considered that and hopefully like well fingers crossed we don't end up in a situation like this ever again but if anything was to come of it you know take advantage of like the ideas and resources that (laughs) we give you as well as (laughs) if you haven't thought about it or like you know just use your brain your common sense Mm. cinemas get closed what are we gonna you know that's a huge population of people who would like not so much dedicate their lives but dedicate a lot of their time and money into watching this stuff and of course we've had to miss out over a year of content yeah and i think i found out the first one of the first films that's back when cinemas reopen at least in the uk anyway it would be fast and furious 9 which yeah, is come out on the 8th of july mm. and then black widow on the 9th of july so i don't know how I, I bet there's going to be a massive like box off ri- rivalry between those two films. Yeah, fingers crossed they both still come out because I've been waiting like well over a year. Especially for in the them. UK, they should be right. I mean, especially in terms of how our lockdown is easing, the dates of which when certain activities and venues reopen. But that's what we're going to see. The biggest impact again is a good impact is like there's been all over the news in the past year of obviously how like especially like AMC theatres and things and like there wasn't really I don't see many ads of it in the UK but there was a lot in the US of like so many hundred million or like a couple of I think it was just a few hundreds of millions that are just lost because obviously you know the cinemas aren't open so no one's going to them so they've lost a absolute fuck ton of money but well they managed to um because they were like I think you kind of said this briefly Mm. um they were doing they were showing like re like what's the word like replays repeats of like old films. Well, a lot that of driving released were. like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the main cinemas were as well because I remember walking past Cineworld in our local town. And I could hear Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fly, <laughs> Goblet of Fly, <laughs> Goblet of Fire playing in yeah. um, one of the cinemas. Ci- I think a couple cinemas. of them were actually. Yeah, because yeah. although it's a very private cinema, there's a there's a sort of privately owned. I don't know if they're privately owned or not. It's a cinema chain in the southwest called like Plaza Cinemas. And there's one not far from where I live. And I think you've been there maybe once or twice. And they're amazing because they're really cheap. And they were, yeah, they were playing, uh, I think, well, they obviously done Inception for the anniversary. Uh, Inception anniversary near when Tenet came out. But they were, I think it was, um, they were doing some films that had been out in the last, well, just films that had already been out the last, like, 10, 15, 20 years, however long. Home Alone was playing at one point around Christmas, around, not Christmas, um, some other time. Actually, it might have been Christmas because were we in and Die Die Hard as well? Die hard, but then, yeah. to be fair, that was like I think that was a couple of years ago. Mm. But, they've, but yeah, you know, and then they always put that back on anyway. But then again, when a cinema has been Christmas. open, like because obviously the world doesn't work together. Obviously, the world does like company like com- com- countries come together, governments try and come together to help each other, but companies like you know amc and odeon probably don't like they're not going to work together to like you know if a film is going to try and release in the us but cinemas aren't going to open in the uk then that's just going to be an issue with uk audiences and like vice versa if something opens in the u like if something plans to open but it doesn't in the uk or the us then you have the issues there and that's been the case for just a lot of it they've like the they've not been releasing films in the states and then but the cinemas have been open like i think like you said literally like Odeon and cineworld are open in the uk but films have like films have been delayed because of covid so they're just releasing like older films again they're just allowing like, the only way they can make money is by showing older films but i think one one way they could have approached it and this is going into like what they could have done hmm. um is keep the cinemas open but obviously do that whole spacing thing yeah. And just keep the cinemas open for longer as well, because, you know, loads of people would have lost their jobs during that time. So you get to em- employ more staff and it's a job that's like more interesting as well, because you've got people doing screen checks. You've got, you know, all the rigmarole mm. that you'd get with the cinema. Like, you know, here's interesting, here's not interesting. <laughs> um, 
because you'd be limiting spaces for, you know, obviously the protection with COVID, you'd lose money a little bit per screening. But with the extended hours, yeah, you'd be yeah. gaining it because you'd be gaining a lot more people. You'd be, if you were more, if cinemas were more of a 24 hour thing, you'd get anyone <laughs> yeah, at any time. Yeah, yeah like come in or alternatively and this is the this is the great idea that we've already been discussing the drive-through cinemas the drive-in cinemas well you they've know, been the someone best goes to, because... someone goes to mackie's and then they just arrive <laughs> and watch a film you know there's no problem with that they're not going to get pissed off because you're eating snacks that aren't from the cinema i don't know why they get pissed off at things like that they they're, the they're all right but it depends on the cinema as well i think but yeah, driving. But is then like you've got the thing. idiots that will go and buy it at like three a.m. when they go to watch um, Black Panther. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like you say, drive-ins have literally excelled because of the well, the whole the main thing, the main like little like uh, the pet peeve of COVID has been the fact that it's I don't know if even that's the right phrase to use for this, but basically indoor activity has been the what like what not to do because of covid because of how it spreads in the air which is why like outdoor facilities and outdoor activities have been the only ones to stay open especially in like 2020 and then obviously everything closed to like finally try and reset the clock again in this third lockdown when it was like let's try for a third final time and just close everything although this first and second lockdown did close everything it's like a boom just fucking try again but like, I yeah. know these things already exist, but another option would be that the cinemas actually uh, mass produce and sell um, high quality film projectors with the screens because like, they make a lot of money from that and you'd get a portion of uh, films with it. It could be like when you get a PS4 or a PS5, for instance, you get the one thing, you get the one with it and mm. then perhaps you get a coupon for a, another one as well in case you don't like that one. Or something and then after that like you know that teaches you what to do to get the new film get the copy of it gets delivered to you you put it on the projector and you know you can put it on the screen and then you've got a actual theatrical experience you've got the what projector, so the cinema the... sells project out what does this so the cinema sellings work so basically the cinema sells <laughs> this sounds you can't it's fucking s's <laughs> the the cinema yeah um would mass produce and sell um, these projectors and with the projectors would come the speakers and also like some it's like a screen monitor that you'd obviously put the projector on obviously projectors already exist and you know people do whatever the fuck they want to do with those whether it's gaming or just watching films anyway but this would have like a full cinema experience with it and obviously because the cinema would be the cinemas that you would have go to would be selling these things obviously they're going to lose money because people are going to be doing that but they're going to gain it because it's their product that they'd be, you know, selling, if that makes sense. I get and then you've got um, Pete and then they'll yeah. finally be satisfied because people are going home as well as the directors of all these films who say, oh, this is a cinema film because people will be going home watching what they want to watch, not only whenever they want to watch it, but also the way they want to watch it for the huge film fanatics. And the cinemas made money because they've basically sold that for the for beyond the price of an average ticket. Well, here, for one like for one film, that would probably only work for the drive-in sense because, of course, most people like don't have a big enough place to put a projector up and like have a. The only way that would realistically work is if you got some. If you could basically, it's going to have to be like an item that would live. You'd have to do some sort of digit. So you'd have to a do it garage almost or like, something or a storage space. It wouldn't. Yeah, it wouldn't work for like general cons like consumers because obviously you, p people wouldn't just take a projector home and like they'd probably most the majority of people would have nowhere to like project and display it. But that's again, I don't know why this didn't happen. I don't know why cinemas didn't just work. Well, some, with... something like that with easy access for a vast majority of the public. Because obviously you would get the odd people who would despise that idea because they just want to go to a normal cinema. But yeah, here's because the they'd thing, feel like that would be how they'd get that proper experience. I don't see th this is what Perhaps. I sh if if <laughs> if I owned any sort of cinema chain, this is what I would have done. I would have worked with. Maybe there is a reason why this didn't happen, but I'm just not thinking that way at the moment. Clearly, <laughs> but I would have if I owned a cinema chain, I would have contacted and worked with a drive like a chain of driving cinemas. Or just a single driving cinema and 
or like you know just use a bit of investment and you know just buy hire some fields for a few months at a time and create my own driving cinemas and instead of focus instead of um just showing old films you want if you want to give people the theatrical experience but you have to obviously go within the like confinements of the like restrictions of covid you just literally show the films at the drive-in cinemas instead of just showing because that's the trouble all these drive-in cinema places were just showing old films and like within the last like 10 like no newer than say two years old whereas if cinema chains just worked even like around the world if they just worked with drive-in cinemas or just made their own drive-in cinemas temporarily they could have show the films they want to show but just outside and they could have even done stuff like i don't know like br chair hire or stuff like you like camp chairs and things and you just have like just literally a cinema but outdoors because if some people don't want to like sit in their car because of like windows too low or some shit they could have done like bring your own chair for free or like bird shit on the screen they can't yeah. see what they're watching <laughs> literally like i don't know why nothing none of that sort of stuff happened it probably just cost cost but they would have made the cost back because people, if, yeah, if, if some of the, because there's drive-in cin cinemas all over the country and all over the world. So people surely, if you found out that like, like for instance, if Fast 9 was like, if Odeon had hired a bunch of, like set up a bunch of drive-in cinemas around the country uh, in collaboration with some privately owned drive-in cinemas and then Fast 9 was playing at a cinema, you'd have probably gone to see it. Like, even if it was outside, because it's still... I mean, I really want to see Fast 9 in, like, either the IMAX, the BFI IMAX in London, yeah. or just an Odeon cinema. I know people will be like, why? It's a shit film. <laughs> you haven't actually seen it yet, so you don't know. But <laughs> from the trailer, Annoyingly, you've I'm got a, a bit point. like... Eh. Yeah. But um, I don't know why that didn't happen. There's probably a reason behind it. It's probably Cost is probably the reason, but again, they would have made their money back, because you could probably almost charge more. If a cinema ticket costs like 10, 12, 14 quid, you could probably charge like 15 just because it's kind of a special thing to be outside watching a new film. But who knows? It didn't happen and cinemas will slowly open now. But <laughs> Anyway, do you want me to go over the Oscar score? Oscar scores. Um, um, considering you know that, pre I and I don't. Right here. But we can discuss right. it after you say it. Yeah, yeah, go for it. So if you skipped to this point, uh in the video or in the spotify stream or however you're listening to this this would be like this. the only thing people come on for this video yeah. for. it's just us talking about the well you talking about the oscars and me just acknowledging it. so um i've only watched two of the films uh three actually no tenet mank and uh sound of metal but I, I this isn't necessarily the order of the way they were the the announcements were released but the 93rd academy awards the oscars so the best visual effects was Tenet, was the winner. Uh, best Costume Design, I'm going to butcher this name, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, um, <laughs> which was the... <laughs> you, <laughs> it's, not, it's not even a comedy, Ollie. <laughs> what's the trailer? It's the, uh, it's the Chadwick Boseman film as well. <laughs> what's it, what's the name? Words. Marauder's Black Bottom? <laughs> no! <laughs> Ma Rainey's <laughs> Black Bottom. Ma Rainey. Ma Sam Rainey's Black Bomb. <laughs> God's sake, your links to Marvel. Well, I mean, Chadwick Boseman was in it. Rest in peace, mate. But Jesus, yeah. I, I forgot to say that earlier when I oh. when I mentioned Black Panther film. But, but yeah, go uh, on. Best costume design. Well, yeah, best costume. So yeah, best visual effects. Tenet. Best costume design. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Best film editing was The Sound of Metal. Best cinematography was Mank. Best makeup and hairstyling again. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. So that's two Oscar wins for. Uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Best Sound, Sound of Metal, so uh, Best Film Editing and Best so Sound of Metal got two Oscar wins as well. Best Production Design was Manx, so that's two Oscar wins as well for that. Best Original Song was Fight For You from Judas and the Black Messiah. Uh, that was the song name and followed by the actual title. Best Original Score uh, was by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross um, in Soul. And the best live action short. Wait, so as in the as in the, the Disney as Pixar in the, film. that one yeah. best original score. Yeah, best, of course I'm gonna know that. <laughs> of course you know. Best live action short film uh, is Two Distant Strangers, uh, Traven by Traven Free and Martin Desmond Rowe. Uh, best animated short film. Uh, yeah, if anything happens, I love you, Michael Govier and Will McCormack. I hope I didn't butcher that name. Ooh. 
And best documentary feature winner was Mark Octopus Teacher by Pippa Ehrlich. I get I I butchered that surname. I think Craig Foster and James Reed. Uh, the best documentary short subject, uh, Collet. I guess I I think that's the name Collet by Alice Doyard and Anthony. I'm going to butcher this last name. Uh, Giacchino, 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 I think. Uh, Soul sounds Se- like a serial killer. <laughs> Soul uh, one again, best animated feature film. Um, it was the only fucking animated <laughs> feature film. No, there was a few. Um, <laughs> what else was there? Uh, there was now. Onward, uh, Over the Moon. Oh, that was pretty good. A Shaun yeah, and the Sheep, a Shaun and the anything. Sheep film. Uh, oh, Farmageddon and Wolf Walkers. Um, best international feature film, another round, uh, which was the. If you've seen that on Instagram or anywhere, it's the um, it's the oh, what's what's your name? I only know. Oh my god. Um, what's his name? Oh my god. This is disgusting of me. How have I forgotten your name? Uh, um, it's not the only thing that's disgusting of you. Brilliant. Thanks. Mads Mickelson. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. I forgot your name. What for the a minute. fuck? How can you forget his name? <laughs> I know. Another round. Oh, yeah, that's a Danish oh, film. Oh god. I'm so um, sorry, everyone. I just I went mind blank for a minute. Okay, it's the best international feature film. Another round was the winner. Best adapted screenplay was The Father. Uh, best original screenplay, Promising Young Woman. Best supporting actor, Daniel Kaluuya for Judas and the Black Messiah. Best supporting actress was Young Ya Jung. I probably butchered that name. I apologize for Minari. Uh, best actress was Frances McDormand for the Norm- Nomadland. Oh, so Norman- oh, I love her so much, she- especially when she played um Dubois in Madagascar Three. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I can just picture her singing North. Nor, oh, I can't remember the name of the song now. North, uh, Best actor, of course, Anthony Hopkins for The Father. Um, oh, God. I love him so much. Uh, best so director great. was Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. And best picture was Nomadland. Uh, Francis McDormand again. So Nomadland, best picture. How many did it win? So that's one, two, uh two i think no is it two i think it is just two for a lot of them just won two oscars but yeah um i'm so glad i mean i'm so glad for VF- tn tenet for vfx of course i'm gonna be like oh, tenet won vfx yeah he's mad about that um i'm glad mank won because that's really good um that's like I'm, I'm a bit annoyed that a lot of people may see it as a sort of aesthetically pleasing film just because it's meant what to... is mank? mank i've never actually so heard of it you i'm Presuming you haven't seen it, I haven't, like, properly seen it in, like, at least five years. But you know about Citizen Kane, do you? Rings a bell. You, you yeah. know the, you, do you know of Orson Welles, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's all about the writer uh, of, of, like, that and or, him working with Orson Welles. Herman Mankiewicz uh, was a writer... And he worked with Orson Welles, and basically. Oh, is it like a sort of Saving Mr. Banks kind of story? In a way, kind of. And um, they basically just wanted to like re- like show show that instead of actually just remake. That's what I was worried about because it was a David Fincher film, so like Fight Club, uh, Gone Girl, uh, The Social Network. That guy, uh, he was just like, I'm going to make a film about like Citizen Kane about Orson Welles, but. That's what I thought it was anyway. It was almost marketed like that. Check your thing. And, um, yeah. But in the end, I actually, I'm glad that it was about just like the writing process for it. And they just decided to make it. It's weird. I like the style of it. If you watch a trailer, it's obviously designed to be like a sort of, it's meant to look like it was filmed at the time, but it still has a modern touch to it, which is nice. Um and yeah just overall was really good i'm glad it won production design it was good cinematography it deserved it yeah um but yeah it was a very good film sound of metal for best sound honestly ollie you need to watch that it's such a good film it's got riz ahmed from venom in it um and uh, oh, we're gonna need to not wrap... a big fan of his but yeah nah, we're gonna need to wrap up yours anyway by the looks of it because your battery's dying <laughs> <laughs> my battery's about to die so <laughs> but um yeah but yeah best sound so yeah i'm actually really glad about that best sound Sound of Metal. You need to watch that, Ollie, when you get around to it. But, um... Man- I'll watch after this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. They're the Oscar wins. Um, hopefully cinem- cinemas will bounce back soon. 
and um, we can. If your thing turns itself off, just switch to your camera while I'm talking. Just switch to your la- yeah your webcam while you're talking in case it cuts off anytime soon. But yeah, um, I'm glad. I'm annoyed. I'm personally annoyed. Tenny didn't win more, but to be honest, it kind of the ones that deserved obviously deserved it. Um, and there was actually a bit of backlash. I think fans were there was the be- best um, best actor, which were uh, Anthony Hopkins won for the father. Um, Chadwick Boseman was nominated for it from Irene's Black Bottom, and there was I think there was some fan backlash that like oh why didn't he win it like posthumously, uh, but like the Chadwick Boseman's family was like no it was a well deserved like very well deserved performance I want to see actually every film I think were for yeah I literally want to see every film that was nominated for best actor actually Sound of Metal I've seen Marani's Black Bomb looks pretty good from the trailer and just because Chadwick Boseman's a fucking legend um Mank I've seen it anyway and Minari that's got that guy from The Walking Dead isn't it Stephen Yen yeah but anyway uh they're the Oscar wins before all these camera dies, uh, yeah, we uh, that's about it. We I do hope... apologise, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we hope the kickback into normality again after COVID is um is, is one... everything's been pushed back so much now. Like we need a win. Like the we film just... industry needs a massive win. Yeah, we're getting there again with the streaming services. Obviously, like on Now TV, they brought out Zack Snyder's Justice League yeah. as like a three to four hour film. Like you know. Bit, a little bit better here and there than Josh Whedon's take, but or Josh just leak. <laughs> Josh <laughs> can't put it. I think in one of our previous. But, videos. Um... Um, <laughs> I think that was like the first ever video, uh, first ever film that went straight to like. Well, it wasn't the first, but to me, it was like the first film that I'd seen that had done that anyway. So, yeah. like, I'm glad they're doing that a little bit. And obviously, people do have to pay for like now TV. I pay like 11.99 a month for it. Mm. So, like, you know, they get a bit of money kind of from that slash obviously everything else that everyone uses. Well, I mean, all the streaming anyway. services are making, yeah, they're make, definitely making their money's worth. But obviously, rightfully, I mean, they're all obviously able to still... That's been the great thing because there's been... Just I want to quickly mention this before we wrap up, but there's been... There's still the ability for filmmaking, the process of film production to still happen. And I mean, it was shut off for a while, I know, in the UK and happened a bit more frequently in the US last year. I know more than the UK, but like that has still been able to go ahead because of Amazon and Pri- Amazon Prime, like Prime Video, Netflix, Disney, obviously, just they're a billion, multi- they're a trillion dollar company, I think, anyway, but or at least hold hundreds of billions. So they're able to at least... And they have, like, loads of films <laughs> planned. Like, this is, like, you know, some Star Wars spin-offs, mm. everything Marvel from Phase 4 onwards, like, their own yeah. original, like, Disney Pixar stuff. Yeah. Um, and then obviously all their TV shows with the big budgets, um, whether it's Marvel or, you know, they got a new Pixar Monsters at Work TV yeah. series coming out that's meant to serve as like a sort of sequel to Monsters Inc. But in mm-hmm. the television series form, that's going to be really interesting. Can't wait for that. But like, you know, even when it does linger back onto TV, like TV is so much easier to just produce than films. I feel like obviously the filming process is difficult, but like, you know, release in terms of well, the general consumption it's the yeah, easiest thing. because obviously at the end of the day they've just got to hit an upload button onto their own servers and then you as the consumer log into your account and watch whatever's just released whereas a theatrical release thousands of trucks go around the world and deliver either film cans or hard drives around the world around each country so it's obviously a much more logistical challenge physically for for theatrical releases but Hopefully that can happen again over the next months and coming months and year or years, however long it takes. Hopefully just coming months. But yeah, we hopefully bounce back into a sense of normality again after this shit mm, year to crossed. 18 months. But yeah, uh, I think that's about it, isn't it? Yeah, I think <laughs> that's everything. COVID rant <laughs> and we hope to bounce back into a sense of normality. So there we go. And if you've got any more questions regarding that, um feel free to let us know in the comments and we yeah. might possibly address it in our next video i know i kind of said that for our fa- previous falcon and Winter soldier video but no one seemed to comment so <laughs> um that'll be yeah. us that, yeah. that's us until next time god i can't get my words out right today <laughs> um click to the right for our falcon and winter soldier episode which is the last one we did and click to the left for some funny bloopers and behind the scenes that we did are you making me add and... end cards yes i am <laughs> 
Because <laughs> you made me edit last week's video. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, so you know. You. Fuck, uh, God, yeah, fuck it. off, Patrick. All I'm right, so to... yeah, <laughs> I've <we're>... actually <laughs> lost <laughs> focus. <laughs> focus on me. There we so, go. So that's it for now, and we'll see you guys next time. Toodles. See you guys.